everyone. Well, we're continuing in our story of Moses and it's part two. There are three parts and this is part two from Bob Hartman's Rhyming Bible. And it's called Pharaoh Just Says No. No. Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh said to Moses, no, no, no. Can you say that with me? I'm going to say it again. And then you join in with me because that's like a chorus. It comes up lots of times. Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh said to Moses, no, no, no. So God turned water into blood that filled the river Nile. The fish all died. The awful smell was horrid, sick and vile. Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh said to Moses, no, no, no. So God said frogs upon the land, jumping here and there. They hopped in beds and plopped in bowls. The frogs were everywhere. Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh said to Moses, no, no, no. So God sent gnats upon the land. They're like little biting flies. The people tried to swat them. The insects kept on biting, though, from head to toe to bottom. Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh said to Moses, no, no, no. So God sent flies to follow the gnats, more itching, biting, swarming. The scratching just went on and on from night time until morning. Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh said to Moses, no, no, no. So God killed every animal in a stable barn or shed. The camels and the cows all died. The donkeys dropped down dead. Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh said to Moses, no, no, no. You see, who could have stopped all this from happening? It could have been Pharaoh if he just said yes, yes, yes. All these terrible things would have stopped. Let's see what happened next. So God sent sores upon the land. Boils, roar and red. It hurt to stand. It hurt to sit. It hurt to lie in bed. Is he going to say yes, do you think? Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. But Moses said to Pharaoh, no, no, no. So God sent hailstorms crashing down to crush the crops of corn and every stalk and every leaf was broken, ripped and torn. Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, yes. No, he didn't. But Pharaoh said to God, no, Pharaoh said to Moses, no, no, no. So God sent locusts on the land to eat what fruit was there. They munched and crunched on all the trees till every branch was bare. Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. But Moses said to Pharaoh, this time he said yes, because I'm fed up with all these terrible things happening to me, my country and all my people. Do you think that's how the story ends? No, no, no. Then God sent darkness like a cloak to cover the whole place. They tripped and fell. No one could see their hand before their face. Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh said to Moses, no, no, no. So God killed every firstborn child of Egypt in the night. But every child of Israel, they were the slaves, remember, lived to see daylight. Then Moses said to Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, my son is dead. This is the hardest blow. So take your people and their things and go away. Please go. Oh
wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And he's lonely and he's lovely since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing. Imaginations are great because we can go anywhere if we use our imagination. So I want you to imagine that you live in a really hot country and you live as a slave. You work really hard from morning to night doing heavy physical labour and the people in charge of you beat you. They treat you badly. They don't give you food or water when you need it. When you go home at night, you're still scared because you don't know what's going to happen the next day. You dream of moving to a new country, a place where you'll be free, but you don't want to be too hopeful because you can't see how that could possibly happen. You're scared and you're frightened. Okay, you can open your eyes. Now, I think that's what the Israelites must have felt when they were working as slaves in Egypt. Do you remember what had happened? This is after Joseph had died and a new pharaoh had come to the throne and he was worried because there were so many Hebrews, so many Israelites, he thought they might rise up and take over. And so he kept them all as slaves. But you know, God had a different idea. God had a plan for his people and he was going to use Moses to free his people. Now I've got two hearts here. This one is made of stone. Nothing can get into this heart. If I pour water on it, it just pours straight up off it. If I try to put something in it, I can't because it's too, too hard. That's like Pharaoh's heart. And then I've got another heart here. And this heart is soft. If I put it in the water, it absorbs the water, it takes it in. Now I think God wants us to have soft hearts so that when we listen to the stories in the Bible, when we talk to God, when we walk in creation, we can be open to him and God can speak into our hearts. But Pharaoh's heart 
was hard. And do you remember what the story said, what happened? Well, first of all, Moses went to Pharaoh and said, let my people go. And the Pharaoh said, no. So God turned all the water in the country into blood. Now we're talking about all the water, all the water that they used for cooking, all the water that they had to bath in. Can you imagine brushing your teeth with blood? Oh, how horrible that would have been. And it must have smelled disgusting. But Pharaoh still said no. So God sent a plague of frogs. Maybe, maybe, maybe. There were frogs everywhere. Frogs in cupboards, frogs in the clothing everywhere. You went, there were frogs. I don't think they were all friendly, like Kermit. Rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it. Oh, it must have been so noisy. And the next plague that God sent were gnats, which are little insects, and they get on you, and they make you itch. They bring up lumps. And after that, there were flies, flies everywhere. All the air was full of them, flies everywhere. And after the flies, all the animals in the land, every single animal, died. That's all the cattle, all the horses, all the animals, they all died. And after the animals, because Pharaoh was still saying no, Moses was saying, let my people go. And Pharaoh said no. And the people woke up and they were covered in sores, they were covered in boils, hard lumps with pus, really, really painful. After the sores came the house stone, house stones like bits of ice that fall from the sky. Normally we get it in this country and they're small and they're still painful, but these were big, big lumps of ice falling from the sky and hitting the people. And still Pharaoh said, no, after the house stones came the locusts, and locusts eat everything. They eat all your crops, everything they see, they munch on. And then there was darkness, complete darkness. For days and nights, just black. And then the last thing that happened, the thing that changed Pharaoh's mind was that the firstborn of all the Egyptians died. After that, Pharaoh said the people could go and we'll learn more about that next week. And so for prayers today, I've got two ideas. Now you might like to make a locust like this. And if you do, all you need is a peg and you need a couple of pipe cleaners. Now I've run out of green pipe cleaners, so I've got some blue ones. So one of your pipe cleaners, you bend it in half, and you put it, you open up your peg, and you put it, push it right as far as you can. And then you're gonna bend the legs, bend the legs, and you can make little feet on the end if you want. You can take your time doing this. You've got some legs, and then the next pipe cleaner you cut in half. So you cut, fold it in half, cut it, so you've got two more bits. Then you push the next one a bit further in, bend that to make some shorter legs. <laughs> Not doing this very well here, but get the idea. And the last bit you use to make the antennae. So you push it right in at the end, lift the pipe cleaner right up. Oh dear. Not very easy to do <laughs> when you're doing it quickly. But if you take your time and bend the ends to make the eyes, let me show you on the one that I made earlier. Okay, and if you want to, you can get some little eyes. You can put some little eyes on the end to make a locust. But my main prayer activity was I thought that you could make a frog like this one. Now, you know I love paper plates. So you start with a paper plate 
On one side you paint it red, on the other side you paint it green. You fold it in half and you cut some eyes out. So cut a bit of card in the shape of eyes, stick it on the top. I had some wiggly eyes, but you could just colour in some eyes and you make some frog feet. And then you need to get a bit of pink paper and cut a long, long tongue. Cut a long tongue, make it round at one end. And onto the tongue, I've written words from a song we sing, which says nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing is impossible for you. Because this story about the 10 plagues shows us that nothing is impossible for God. God is all powerful. So I thought maybe you could make a frog or a locust to remind you of the story. So God wants us to have soft hearts and he wants us to remember that nothing is impossible for him. Now I'm gonna finish with a prayer. I'm actually gonna say the words of the song. Our Lord God, nothing is impossible for you. And you could join in with the last words. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Nothing is impossible for you. So Lord God, thank you that you've made the heavens and the earth by your great power. Thank you, Lord, that you made the heavens and the earth with your outstretched hand. Help us to remember that nothing is too difficult for you. Nothing is too difficult for you. You're great in counsel and mighty indeed. And nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing is too difficult for you.